Hello and welcome to KAUS Live. The International Society of Petroleum Engineers, or SPE, serves upstream professionals in the oil and gas industry. Now, the award-winning KAUST student chapter was established in 2011, and it continues to support great science nearly eight years later. So here to talk to us about that is the director of the Ali Al Naimi Petroleum Research Center, Tad Patsik, as well as doctoral student Ahmed Saad. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, Professor, give us a sense for ANPERC, for viewers that haven't uh, heard of it previously, give us a sense for the, the breadth of, of what the center is doing, both in terms of educational initiatives and uh, some programs as well. So, in terms of the number of people today, mm. ANPERC is always uh, is, uh, over 80 people strong. Four years ago, it was just me and empty offices <laughs> and, and an empty cellar in Building 5, uh. which then became our lab complex of over 3,500 square meters or 35,000 square feet. Mm. That complex uh, houses now eight big functioning labs, which were custom designed for our needs, two high bays, a big high bay and a small high bay, cold room, and a significant space for the students uh where they have no windows so they don't get distracted, they only learn. <laughs> um, we now have uh, six faculty, uh, nine uh, research scientists, ten postdocs, uh, plus minus because we never know about 32 mostly PhD students, uh, three technical staff and two staff uh, for administration. So we are a lean mean organization with now lots of equipment, in, in fact, millions of dollars uh, of very complex custom-made equipment, which allows us to do experimental research in many areas of our sciences. Mm -hmm. So uh, our charge is to look at a reasonable increase of uh, ultimate recovery of mm -hmm. oil and perhaps recovery of gas uh, from shales in the Jafura Basin, but we are also looking at gas seeps in the Red Sea, uh, at the at the bottom uh, seafloor uh, geology, mm -hmm. um, it w whether it indicates uh, gas reservoirs uh, under the bottom, we are looking at rock mechanics and and geomechanics of of the formations in Arabian Peninsula mm -hmm. and elsewhere, um, and we are conducting literally dozens of projects uh, with various faculty and as of now seven projects are supported by Saudi Aramco and there's about 12 projects in the works for the support hopefully coming soon. Wow. So our research is a good mixture of curiosity driven fundamentals mm -hmm. which are uh, financed by KAUST, by our baselines uh, and applied research whose stated goal is to increase uh, energy uh, independence and steer the Saudi economy away from such dependence from oil, uh, let's say in, in power generation. And I may talk about this a little bit later. As of this year, this fall, uh, we have created our own teaching program, a graduate program in earth resources and petroleum engineering. Mm. And that program uh, is educating the future leaders of academia and industry in their sciences. Mm -hmm. But we are, we are not a classical petroleum engineering department. We will never be one. So I want to state it for the viewers and listeners uh, for the record. We are looking at the future of this industry and the future needs uh, of the workforce. So we are very forward looking. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to train a bunch of technicians. Mm -hmm. We're trying to train a, a bunch of future uh, technology, uh, engineering, and management leaders uh, for Saudi Arabia and for the world. Right. Well, and, and so you were at UT previously, so there, there's a juxtaposition there, and maybe we'll get to that Correct. Um, in, in, a, in a bit. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm going to go to Ahmed and, and ask, um, tell us a little bit about the student experience, in particular since we're um, talking about the SPE chapter, uh, give us a sense for the student experience, um, you know, in the chapter, how that's helping you as a student. 
So um, SPE, uh, a chapter at KAUST, has um, uh, students from different majors, not only petroleum, because the name is just want to highlight this at the beginning, because mm. the name sometimes gives you an impression that it's only for petroleum engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, SPE has more than one, uh, 60,000 members worldwide. Many of them are chemical engineers, mechanical, electrical, uh, even computer scientists and applied mathematicians, okay. uh, all under the umbrella of SPE. And um, as a student, SPE uh, offers a free membership for students and even for young professionals uh, for the first year after their uh, graduation. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of events and competitions uh, between uh, students from different universities that SPE holds. For example, the Petro Bowl, which uh, Kaust uh, participated in, and we can later talk on uh, in more detail about this. Right. Uh, the SPE Paper Contest, where uh, students uh, go and show their uh, research work uh, and compete with each other in different divisions, masters, PhD, and we had students from our center uh, going and competing in this in regional and international levels before. Right. And, uh, and, and Kaust was a winner in 2015, I think, right? Yes, we, uh, uh, Petro Bowl, we won the first place in 2015 in okay. the, uh, over Middle East, North Africa, and India region, and okay. we participated in the finals in Houston. Right. Um, this year we had uh, another milestone with our team uh, uh, making uh, an achievement of being the first team in, from the Middle East to reach up to the uh, Elite Eight in right. the Peter Bowl uh, competition. Right. Um, and personally, uh, SPE, like I represented Kaust in uh, SPE Student Summit in Oklahoma 2016. Mm. Uh, I participated in Peter Bowl myself before. Uh, and uh, have held different like board member uh, positions in SPE, vice president, president, and uh, right. it has been quite an enriching uh, experience. So, so how many other uh, centers or, or groups are students coming from? Give us a sense, is it? Uh, so now we have uh, more than 60 <coughs> members, uh, wow. active members in, uh, in our chapter here at KAUST, mm -hmm. and that's a good number compared with the size of the uh, like the number of students at KAUST. Right. Uh, from different majors, we have people uh, from computer science even uh, interacting with us, marine science. Interesting, okay. Um, professor, um, tell us a little bit about what makes a successful student. How, how do students come here and, and succeed, particularly in the context of ANPERC? Um, mm -hmm. Well, th that's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a chemical engineer and a physicist who stumbled upon petroleum engineering when I was hired at Shell for the Shell Research Lab, which at the time was probably, well, not probably, was the best ever research lab created by this industry. It doesn't exist anymore. Most of these research labs don't exist. Mm -hmm. The companies went out of the research business largely, except for Saudi Aramco and some Total and a few other companies. Yeah. So at the time, uh, I was the last of a group of 11 chemical engineers and physicists yeah. hired uh, by Shell Development at, at the time. There were no petroleum engineers hired. We all had no idea about petroleum engineering. I was fluid mechanics and catalysis. I was working on, on, on the space lab technologies for treating materials, I, so little did I know about porous media. But then I stumbled upon one Professor Larry Lake, who had, at the time, so yeah. long ago, was already at UT Austin. Oh. Um, and, and he brought me up to speed in two weeks in, in basics of petroleum engineering. Right. So my point being is that it is very important to have a basic education in mathematics, mm -hmm. in physics, in chemistry, uh, more often than, than not now in biology, mm. obviously in computer science, that goes without saying. Every petroleum engineer who wants to have a flourishing career mm. needs to be strong in programming and now obviously in, in the latest fad uh, worldwide, which is AI and deep learning and what have you. Mm. Now, feds come and go, but there is some value to this exercise mm. in terms of earth sciences. So our focus is to get the best athletes in terms of their preparation in general sciences and engineering, and then train them in certain areas of our sciences. We cannot train them in everything, in yeah. things that we are good at, but then train them better and more than in most other programs. Yeah. And so when they leave cows and they go to wherever they go, to academia, national labs, companies, they're gonna shine. 
Mm -hmm. So that's our goal. It's not, we're not trying to educate technicians right. or, or manipulators of little things. We're trying to educate visionaries, people who can think about big things and go far. How, how do you, and this is always a question that I'm curious uh, he hearing academics talk about, how do you pick a fruitful direction then after you've had that, that broad base of education? Mm -hmm. how, how do you know what's going to be a good direction for new researchers or new grads to head off into? Mm -hmm. Again, it's a very complicated <laughs> question, uh, almost impossible to answer because each faculty will give you a different answer. Uh -huh. I'll give you my answer. Okay, so uh, I'm a center director and, and I'm a professor. I've been a professor for almost 30 years. Mm. Okay, um, first at Berkeley and then at UT Austin. Um, so the way I look at the research always have is that there has to be some practical application, something that actually benefits other people. And very often in the past, I got my ideas, in fact, from being an expert witness in about 18 trials for you know, different companies, mostly insurance companies. Interesting, yeah. Because what was at stake <laughs> was the deep understanding of certain problems. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also, you know, on, on the advisory board for the um, Department of Interior in the U.S. following the BP disaster, mm -hmm. the, the blowout in, of the Macondo well. Mm -hmm. So there are huge, important problems uh, which are not well understood. Mm -hmm. And realization that these problems exist, shales now, for example, um, always focuses my effort in certain directions. Mm -hmm. But having identified the problem, there needs to be also a good science. Cannot be just kind of little thing, me too, um, that doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. So a combination of practical application and good science behind it and good engineering behind it, uh, that's what motivates me. And, and so, and then that broad interest and education on top of the basis of science is what's been uh, successful. Right. So, right. So, so we always leave the education part uh, to the end because, you know, <laughs> frankly speaking, we are rewarded for papers and research, not for education. Right. However, I think that um, Ahmed may confirm that I'm telling the truth here. I view education with utmost uh, attention, mm. and uh, I try not to skip even a single lecture during a semester, which is very difficult here at KAUST. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes I have to skip a few lectures, but, uh, and I try to devote utmost attention to the students. Because if you don't educate your students well, mm. they will lag you know, for the lifetime. So, so it's a combination of educating them in the courses, mm -hmm. but again, uh, as, as Ahmed might, might confirm, the group meetings, the one-on-one -on -one meetings, also lead to the development of research ideas and research thoughts every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that brings us basically to enrichment. Like, how, how does the center, outside of that coursework, how does the center sort of help you guys get enriched uh, in various other ways? What have you experienced? So for, uh, <coughs> for SPE, mm -hmm. from the early time of the center, like uh, when Professor Pazdik first arrived to KAUST, one of the th very, uh, very first things he did was meeting the SP team at KAUST. And we had a very uh, like enriching and nice discussion and he asked us about our activities, our plans, and at that time we were planning to go uh, to participate in the finals of the Petro Bowl in the mm. US and he uh, um, helped us with the training and preparation. So that goes back to the, like, of the very early days where, uh, of the center. And with time, with the growth of the center, the interaction increased. We had like, more faculty joining in, more students, so we had more members. And uh, even in the like, monthly meeting of the center, uh, where all the center members gather, we had the opportunity to present uh, uh, short presentations uh, to promote the chapter and talk about our activities and encourage more uh, students and researchers to uh, interact with us, even in our events, uh, like we had a um, like um, a non-technical quiz about uh, energy and earth. Uh, we had uh, Professor Folker from our center coming and joining us, uh, enjoying the time. Uh, even for the Petro Bowl, uh, yeah. we had a lot of support, uh, including Professor Pazdik, Professor Hussein Hatayt, meeting almost on daily basis with the students, with the team. Evening basis. Yep. <laughs> to to train, to give them uh, like advice, uh, uh -huh. training material, uh, 
so there are lots of support and, and help even to find the right channels to find the fund to sponsor the trip for the students to go. Right. So with time, the interaction is growing more and more between the SPE chapter and, uh, and the center. Yeah, I mean, it raises the question, like, what, what is the Petra Bowl and, and, and what do you have uh, to do to get prepared for it? I mean, so Petra Bowl is um, um, an, a comp fast-paced competition, <laughs> uh, including technical and non-technical questions about uh -huh. the oil and gas industry. And you have uh, universities from all over the world competing in uh, regional stage first uh, to qualify to, mm -hmm. uh, to the finals. Uh, and this year it was uh, in the US and our team qualified and um, you'd have to spend months of preparation. It doesn't come overnight. You cannot like just uh, show up uh, and start uh, preparing a week before. Right. Uh, it needs lots of work and Professor Padzik can confirm the amount of uh, effort that the guys did to, uh, yes. uh -huh. to go there. It is a very, very difficult competition <laughs> mm -hmm. because uh, you are on a timer there are teams of four or five um, uh, competing, two teams at a time in different branches, and then they eliminate. It's kind of like in, in Wimbledon. <laughs> uh, 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 and you have to push that button quicker than your competition, otherwise you don't get to answer. Uh -huh. But if you answer wrong, you score negative points. Ah, okay. And some of the questions require actually quick solutions, mm -hmm. uh, mathematical solutions. Uh, others are highly technical and, and, and I would say highly esoteric. And others are very political and, and also esoteric. So, so it's a very, very hard competition. I am really proud of these guys <laughs> that they got to where they got because it takes years of development to get to the top. And this is not the end, like we, no, we, we are still preparing again, <laughs> we're building a new team and uh, like uh, next March there will be the regional qualifiers mm -hmm. uh, and we will have a CAUS team to go and compete in the regional level. Yeah. Hopefully they will make it to the finals and we hope that we'll, the team will go even uh, further in the competition. H how many, it's just students, right? Yes, students. And, yes, and yes, how, yes, many, students. how many students in the, in the group? Uh, the team consists of five, okay. uh, four main uh, members and one uh, substitute. Yeah, and we had people from different uh, like uh, uh, fields, like a mm -hmm. petroleum engineer, a uh, geologist on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the reservoir engineer, so they are like uh, an integrated team. Everyone yes. has his wow. own point of uh, strength. Right. And, and uh, I mean, I guess then the question is, it, it seems like you would learn a tremendous amount by being surrounded by this team. Oh, yes. And talk yes. about the effect <laughs> yes. of that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like the, the, the team was <coughs> meeting almost every day for, mm -hmm. for a long period, and the amount of material we need to go through, the, uh, the interaction with your uh, uh, colleagues, wow. and they have different... Uh, uh, points of strength in terms of knowledge and uh, mm. uh, you have to divide the material that to study among yourself and also read books about history of the industry so it's a, a very enriching experience. Yeah. Uh, right. And I have two of the team members in my class this semester right. and they probably are the two best students in the class. <laughs> so so it, it is a very enriching and a very tough experience and by the end I had to tell the guys to get some rest and get some sleep because they were exhausted. They, I mean, they were absolutely exhausted. So. Very good. Well, gentlemen, thank you for speaking with us today. Thank we really you. Well, thank it. you. Yeah. And that's all the time that we have for today. Remember to comment, like, and share on all the KAUST social channels. And from everyone here at KAUST, thanks for watching.